in uh, my co-host. There's uh, Mr. Fox guy. There's Mike. How you doing, Buenos Mike? Buenos dias, everyone. Buenos dias. Yeah, Mike has chosen to uh, to stream from outdoors, it looks like. Yeah, I figure I was stuck inside a lot, but uh, yeah. I mean, nothing's really changed. Yeah. Everything <laughs> looks completely normal. Well, so. Somehow the sun hasn't risen. <laughs> uh, it doesn't anymore. No, yeah. it doesn't. Uh, there is no more sun. Yeah. There is no more sun. Uh, uh, things just get worse and worse. We forgot they? to light it. The pilot light went out yeah. <laughs> while we were all inside with the pandemic. So, oops. Yeah. Um, oops. Ellipses. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Carissa <laughs> says social distancing is easy in a cemetery. Yeah. I, well, they I, are, I they are kind of packed in there. We all kind of packed back in there. But uh, mm -hmm. no one really, uh, you know, it's kind of like a really close knit mm -hmm. community. But yeah. no one really encroaches on one another yeah. not a whole lot uh, of complaints they stay dead. not really no no not at all not at all there yeah. is there is no call for managers or supervisors so <laughs> yeah that's always a good um, thing mike has his own uh twitch channel it's called mr fox guy um go ahead and type your uh twitch oh. address in the chat yeah, uh sure. he hosts uh, bad movies uh twice a week um on wednesdays and fridays and he he takes the word bad very seriously he shows the worst of the yes. worst um, yes yes i do uh in fact i showed the worst movie i've ever screened on the wednesday creature from the haunted sea you're, it is by far the worst thing you're it saying that was the worst wow yes it was yes. worse than uh worse than that it, that talking monster truck yeah twister's revenge was the worst but the bar is lowered even more wow uh, that's bad. It, it was so bad. It was like it wanted to be. It was a comedy horror. Okay. But it didn't get didn't get any any okay. of that right. Okay. And the fact that Charles B. Griffith wrote yeah. it, mm -hmm. and it's like it was almost like written as an afterthought. It was mm -hmm. like probably Corman said, "Hey, uh, Chuck," mm -hmm. he probably called him Chuck. You know, like <laughs> yeah. the way the Pepper pep uh -huh. Patty would call Chuck, yeah. Charlie Brown. That say, Chuck, I need a, I need a movie in the next ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. And that's what happened. Okay. All right. Um, he's talking about Roger Corman, of course, and uh, oh, Charles B. Griffith was the uh, the screenwriter who wrote um, um, Little Shop of Horrors. That's what we know him for. So, so yeah, he was also he had some time to edit that. Yeah, yeah he had some time. He, he also wrote uh, the screenplay for Death Race Two Thousand, uh, perhaps uh, one of Roger Corman's most popular films, which I think is uh, hilarious. Um, did uh, I, Griffith also write the Bucket of Blood screenplay too? He did. He did. Yeah, they were the same script. I mean, those were, the, the, those were, they were excellent. They were excellent compared to this. Thing. Yeah, yeah. This didn't have a script. It was like yeah. they filmed themselves on in. I think it was filmed in the Philippines, if I'm not mistaken, and it just mm -hmm. it went nowhere. I thought it was. Oh, Puerto, maybe it was Mexico. Yeah, yeah Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. You're right, you're I thought right. it was Puerto Rico. Yeah. There was another one that was set in the Philippines. It was the one before that. Yeah. And. Uh, that yeah. was an excellent movie by comparison. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I can't mm. think of Death Race 2000 anymore without thinking of the story that I read about it on Wikipedia. Charles B. Griffith said that <laughs> um, he, uh, uh, Roger Corman considered it a very serious uh, movie idea. He, he considered it to, to have very <laughs> serious social commentary and a very serious uh -huh. future. And there is a lot of really interesting futurism and and predictions about politics a lot of which came true but uh mm -hmm. but he he told uh, charles b griffith wrote this uh he wrote the comedy script basically and corman was like he was furious said, this, this is serious this is serious chuck and but <laughs> but uh um but uh, <laughs> charles b griffith said that then uh he was taking it seriously until corman showed him the cars that he had built and he said are you are you kidding these are jokes, <laughs> you know, with giant eyeballs yeah. and teeth on them, and, and you know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, um, it was a Corman week. It really was yeah. a Corman week. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. expect it to be a Corman week because on my Discord channel we watched The Howling, mm -hmm. and Corman has a uh, cameo. Does he? <laughs> and that, yeah, he has a cameo where D. Wallace is in the phone booth waiting for the serial killer to call her so she get mm -hmm. her exclusive interview and he's outside waiting for her to get out of the phone phone booth. <laughs> no kidding <laughs> yeah there were a lot great. of a lot of names and faces in that movie i watched the the very end of it on your discord and mm -hmm. i just have to say i don't the gore movies just i, I can't they're, they're not my thing uh, they're that for, was a much better movie than <clears throat> most of that era 
Yeah. Um, and of course, I have no problem with a movie with D, D with D Wallace in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. She's wonderful actress. Mm-hmm. She was Somewhat on magnificently um, attract, tra- attractive <laughs> actress too. She she showed up. Uh, a very young D Wallace showed up very unexpectedly on Bigfoot and Wild Boy. When I was looking oh, yeah? through uh, episodes, <laughs> she plays some sort of space princess from the future. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, I was like, "Is that is that D. Wallace? Could that possibly be D? And of course, you look at Wikipedia, and there she is. Yeah, um, that's 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 great. Yeah, um, everybody has those embarrassments in in their past. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, we'll have to do another Bigfoot and Wild Boy marathon at some point. Oh please, yeah, please, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be we're our we're our good Saturday, that rare yeah, good yeah. Saturday. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a good Saturday next next weekend. I've already decided yes. what I'm going to show. I was telling you yesterday. But I don't know whether I'm going to promote it beforehand or not, because I don't know if promoting it will help people come in. Because uh, hmm. Mike wanted me to keep it a secret from him. He wanted it to be a surprise. Um, <laughs> um, the fact that it's a good Saturday morning may, just yeah. may be a good palette I, I think for I'm, November. Yeah. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is, um, after Bad Saturday Morning is over, I'm going to show... I'm going to show like a, a two-hour block of cartoons that will that will rotate all day. I think I'll just leave mm. it running. I'll pick okay. uh, I'll pick Halloween and horror-themed cartoons. You know, old Mickey Mouse skeleton cartoons and uh, yeah, yeah. Cas- Casper cartoons and stuff. Just let them run all day. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking for Christmas, because um, I'm I'm not interested in Christmas personally. I'm not interested in Christmas. I don't I don't. I don't celebrate it. That's it's a thing for f- people with families. I don't. I don't have. I don't have a family. But yeah, uh, my, my wife and I celebrate it like yeah. we're just sit around. Yeah, I'm thinking of what I'll do. Doing nothing. I'm thinking of doing a an all day marathon, all day Christmas marathon called Everything But Rudolph. <laughs> and <laughs> and I'll show I'll show every Rankin Bass cartoon except the Christmas cartoons. <laughs> Right, because <laughs> they made tons of them. They made tons of them, and they a lo- had the, their last one. They went out with a with a with a bang. Yeah, their last one was quite good. That's the um, was it the Life and Times of Life Santa Claus? Santa Claus. Or... It was based on the the L. Frank Baum book. Yeah, yeah, and it it, it was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty. Lo- uh, you know, close to it. Yeah. It was it was quite. Yeah. Um and. I think it was quite quite good. Yeah, I remember uh, as 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 a kid not liking it when it first came on because it was the mythology was so different from what they had already established mm-hmm. in their existing right. cartoons. I'm like, what about the Miser Brothers? What about <laughs> you know that's I that's know. the st- <laughs> that's the stuff that I wanted. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that one I would not be showing. That's a Christmas cartoon. Um, okay. I wouldn't well, be. Well, sh- Life and Times of Santa Claus is a really like pagan. <laughs> yeah. to it. That's why you don't you know, see it around. You're right. It's not yeah. played. It's not yeah. played. It's like, what? This yeah. with the augers and what's with yeah. the the yeah uh, the, the yeah the the great the, neck. the, the uh. nature gods with the the antlers and and all the stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, the um, uh, the mythology from uh, Year Without a Santa Claus is really pagan too, with Mother Nature. And mm-hmm. that's the thing that I liked about Year Without a Santa Claus is that it, it expanded the, the Santa Claus universe so much. Right. Uh, <laughs> to, it's like, oh, he's yeah, not at the top of the yeah, food chain. Yeah, he Mother Nature yeah. herself. I, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the fact that, uh, the fact that uh, Mrs. Claus was being played by um, um, Hazel. Is it Shirley, the uh, Shirley Booth? Yeah, Shirley Booth. The Shirley Booth, yeah. 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 I, I always loved that. Okay, well, yeah. let's get on with our weekly stories. Um, well, let's do it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> oh, before we before we get started, I need to put a link in the chat. You all, take a look at this link I'm putting in the chat. Go to this link, and you can download. Um, it's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, because the greatest Halloween the, special of all time. The, the Great Pumpkin, for the first time since it was animated in 1966, will not be on network television. It is exclusively on Apple Plus or whatever that service is called. So go to that link and download it yourself and watch it. And, yep. and stick it to the man. <laughs> uh, to no surprise to anybody who knows me, I already have it on Blu-ray. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, yeah. A, it's a tradition. That starts this, it. you got to watch at this, that and the... <laughs> yeah, and, and, what, and what else? Uh, the Thanksgiving one and then oh. the 
and the Christmas one. I think think they were released mm-hmm. in the reverse order, or it was the Christmas was first, and then Halloween, and then yeah, then thanks. I, I think I think Charlie Brown Christmas was the first one. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, yep. Anyway, at that link, you can either download it or you can watch it online, um, and it, and it yes. works. Uh, I I tried it. I already did it myself. Okay. Do it. Do it. <laughs> And of course, you can make uh, donations at the link that just came up in the Twitch. We need the we need the donations, and also there's uh, this new service I'm I'm promoting cause, to see if it'll work called Zelle. If your bank is is uh, is connected to the Zelle network, you should be able to donate money to us directly through your bank, and uh, supposedly without fees. Yep. I'd, I'd be very interested to see if that works. Okay. All right, we need to catch up with our. Um, with our weekly, uh, our weekly stories, um, I don't think I've stopped to point out that uh, I've got Froggy the Gremlin down in the corner. He's he's going to be our our mascot uh, from now on. Um, he's uh, yeah, he's right over there. Yeah, probably one of the darkest uh, uh, children's programming characters I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 one of the most insidious and cruel. Uh, trickster gods I've, I've ever <laughs> I've ever witnessed. Um, you, you need no, to watch. He's like he's saying no redemption. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like his voice too. Hiya, kids. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. Hey, um, hey. Do you do you kids like chewing chewing tobacco? It's really <laughs> good, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, uh, we we need to catch up with. Uh, Charge Man Ken and the Mighty Hercules. And uh, since the latest uh, Clutch Cargo story arc ended, I decided to to try a different series. We're going to watch the first episode of Diver Dan, which is all right. Which is another thing. Is it related to Scuba Steve? Is it related to Scuba Steve at all? No? Scuba Steve? I don't know Scuba Steve. That's um, uh, 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 what's it? Adam Sandler Big Daddy reference. Mm. No, Scuba Steve. Yeah, I don't know that movie. If you look uh, up, if just look up, just look up Scuba Steve. I I know about Stinky Diver from uh, <laughs> the uh, what was that show? The, the uh, Kablam. Um, it was uh, yeah. What was the segment um, called? It was the the uh, the uh, I forgot. The uh, caffeine isn't working yet. Yeah. I got to drink a little more. I forgot what that segment of the show was called. The the Amazing Heroes or something. I forget. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, let's get started with. Uh, Charge the Man horror Ken. of charge men Ken. right the enemy character that would love to be in the overlook hotel <laughs> you fit right in <laughs> yeah he would just burn it down <laughs> yeah so he was he was even if he was hired to be the you know the caretaker he would say hey there's hey there's aliens here blam 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 <laughs> I love the theme song. I, I really do like it. Ken, go, go, Ken. <laughs> there was a, uh, I have a, a Japanese anim, anime series from the 70s that when it came over to the United States, it was packaged into five shows yeah. uh, called Force 5. And this is like okay. one of them called Guy King. And mm-hmm. the Guy, Guy King, King theme is ridiculous. Yeah, it's about like protecting your happiness. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what is what is this? What it goes is like this codependent song hmm. that you know. <laughs> yeah, it's called this episode is called Showdown: The Undersea City. Oh, is this his teacher? I guess so. I think that's his teacher. Yeah. You shall now become a Jiren. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Gonna... don't make me vote. <laughs> I will say this Japanese is like one of the coolest sounding languages if you don't know what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone move. There we go. Don't make too much noise. Karen thinks everything is fun. Was that an insult? Everything is. Yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> what's that pipe over there? 
There's a pipeline that brings oxygen from the surface. That, that's where the that's where the chocolate milk is pumped into the furnace. Uh, <laughs> Augustus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at those sunfish, giant sunfish. <laughs> what a creep. <laughs> Why don't I, the director of the undersea city... That's how people talk. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Ken is already Grr. suspicious? He's already yeah. suspicious. She hasn't done anything suspicious, and Ken is already wanting to blow something up. Sociopath. <laughs> so there's a playground in, in the undersea city here. She seems like a different person now. Hmm. She went with that director to the central room. Yeah, that's that's uh, suspicious. Time to murder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at these. I like these robots. Cool. Didn't even, they didn't even color him. Uh oh, well, that's on perp. Oh wait a minute. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. Uh, number twelve over there. <laughs> this remote control with one button on it. <laughs> Hi. Stop the oxygen. Hi. <laughs> wow. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carissa, why is why the why aren't the kids on the tour? <laughs> Robots kill this child. Okay. Oh, is you that, don't know what you're dealing with. Yeah. So is that is that within these robots programming to kill? Uh, yeah, isn't any robot really? You know? Yeah. Like you, you oh, tell your the K is for kill now. Yeah. <laughs> like, Again. Right. Yeah. Like you, you tell your um, you tell your remote control airplane to kill, and it'd be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bombing run. Go. <laughs> Everyone, return to your original work. And, and the theme song is still playing. <laughs> oh, he's flying indoors. How? How in yeah. the? Yeah. Curse you yet again, charge me again. Did he already foil the... Is it already over? I, oh, there we go. Yeah. Now, wait a second. He, he he was flying his secret kill saucer indoors. I didn't, I didn't make that up, did I? No, no. He was flying it through the hallway. Kids don't care. Yeah. What... From now on, don't walk home from school alone. Yes, yes. I'll have you walk with me home every day. Okay, that's what Ken wanted all along. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, what's he gonna bargain for? You don't have any time to play. Fuck! <laughs> all stuck! Ha 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 ha. Well, only an entire legion uh, inside the ship died, so it's, you know, yeah. minimal damage done to the environment. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the the phase plasma guns in the ship that's leaking radiation into the ocean and the <laughs> power cells that also yeah. have some iridium in yeah. it. So, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's a small detail. <laughs> Gojira will just eat it all up. Yeah. So this is what we're going to be watching 100 years from now and realizing this is why humanity failed. <laughs> yeah. All right, now it's time for Hercules. A real cartoon. <laughs> well, another great theme song. I do like that, that, that trivia that you told us about it last week, that Johnny Nash 
recorded this at the height of his career, not like yeah. when it was starting out. Yeah. He was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do this song. He already had some top ten hits. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it would be the height of his career, because uh, I can see clearly now it came in like 1971, 72, something like that. Mm, that's true, that's true. The Burbs. An eerie forge. Wow. Oh, it's Dark Souls. No. <laughs> what? The Mask of Vulcan. With it, the kingdom is mine. All mine. Now I am ready for the <laughs> So you look like you an just idiot. Get the kingdom. You get a kingdom when you put a bucket over your head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Guys, don't laugh, but here comes Buckethead again. <laughs> yeah. Fire away if you dare. If you dare. Yeah, they dare. <laughs> Save your spears, soldiers. No I'm really I'm really resisting making it's, it's just a flesh wound reference. <laughs> you know, it's just the fact that he happened to invade them on National Rubber Spear Day, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Hall of Whatever. Oh. Is it Dodonus going to be looking in the... the... There he is again. Oh, airing it out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, we see him it jumping. Feels good. Yeah. Ah, nice. Stuck it again. He didn't even say anything. Nope. Quiet, too. Quiet. Where is this mask of Vulcan? There he is, Herc. There he is. So the first person he asks is Newton. That seems like a mistake. Yeah. I will, Newton. It's like asking Newton is like, oh, I need to find something. Let me go to Alta Vista. <laughs> Let me go to Alta Vista. <laughs> All right, mask. I'm ready. <laughs> make, a, uh, make a search engine called Ask Newton. It gives you incorrect information and it repeats everything twice. Oh, listen, they're playing. Exit stage right, even. They're, they were playing uh, um, the perpetual motion uh, music by Richard Strauss there. Ouch. Ow. <laughs> He's rubbing his knuckles. Ow. I have an owie. <laughs> <laughs> Newton. That's me. That's me. I guess if you were truly indestructible, you could just stand there right in front of the guy. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is he... Would you say he's oh. invulnerable? Me? <laughs> me? Remember, Newton, I'm counting on you. Toot. Toot. There's only one way to stop. One way to stop. Listen. Yeah, let me guess. Take, uh, you know, get a get a rope or something and pull the helmet off, and then Hercules can pummel him. Oh, annoy him to death! Hey, oh, yeah, kick right there. Yeah, what the hell was that? <laughs> oh, no. at least the bad guy's not wearing Crocs with socks. Yeah. You know what? He should work on his inner issues and fix himself yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grr, arg. Yeah, he's making a he's making like a a, a table saw sound. Yeah. Whoa. That did it. Oh, that was the idea was to trip oh, him. Oh, oh, oh. Couldn't have like you just maybe didn't have to catch him. Yeah, it's like just whoops. a thought. Poison dart. Wait, come on, come on. Yeah, wait come for on. it. There we go. <laughs> Running, yes. <laughs> he, he's not carrying the guy off to prison, though. Yeah. He, that, he that's ran what, all the way home. 
Is Carissa the only one watching now? Somehow we lost viewers. <clears throat> Somehow, I see. Okay, here's the first episode of Diver Dan. Diver Dan. Not, not Diver Down by uh, Van Halen, but Diver no. Dan. Episode one is titled Hard Water. Oh, science. Cool. <laughs> this is a... Didn't know it was Friday. ...is unknown to man, except to our hero, the brave Diver Dan. He's searching the depths of the seven seas. Now you may share in these strange mysteries. I believe this was from 1960 oh, or 61. This is a show that I've entirely missed. I'm not familiar with it at all. Oh, that's your own problem, dude. All I hear in the intercom is your voice. Oh, boy, that was great. What's going on here? I, I know I hear voices. And that's someone singing. But at the bottom of the sea? Maybe I've been diving too long. <laughs> I'd make a Disney reference, but I don't want to get sued. <laughs> Hi there, Georgie Porgy. Well, Fally, why <laughs> snow? I was just on my way to visit. Okay, I'm kind of charmed already. Right. Yep, she promised to sing us a song. Oh, great! I Come think you'll on. recognize the voices here too. What did you say? I didn't say anything. You know what I gotta? You know I gotta? Yeah, I gotta do. It's just the thing I, I do. Mm -hmm. Well, bless my gill and fins. I know fish, and a cute one. Oh, she's scared. Oh, come on out, pretty little fish. We won't harm you. I'm Finley the Haddock, and this is Georgie the Pork. Here comes Doc Sturgeon. Oh, good. Hey, Doc. Here? Oh, Finley. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> well, I hope. Doc, look what we found. A cute little fish, bright as a coin. Well, bless my scales. <laughs> Alan Swift. Yep. Yeah, Simon Barr, Sinister, and yeah. Riff, Riff Raff, and yeah, he did many wow. of the many of the underdog and Tennessee tuxedo voices. Mm -hmm. And you can tell. Yeah. Is that good or bad? Georgie, you go tell this for her. If she agrees, we'll bring the friggin' little fish to her. Right on, Finley. Yes, Finley, this little fish will require special care. I've seen it's clips from this show in color. So I, I think it was shot in color, but I couldn't find any any complete series in color. Georgie can ask the mermaid whether... Hey, Georgie is coming back. Now, speaking of complete series, I saw on Amazon that they have, like, the Jetsons on Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. And Johnny Quest on, yeah. on uh, Blu-ray with the entire yeah well not the entire series of Johnny Quest but at least the first iteration I'm like oh, yeah. that's tempting yeah oh so good I'm waiting for Herculoids on Blu-ray that that would be awesome Herculoids we should show Herculoids at some point yeah, fantastic I, I love it I must be losing my mind only cartoon I could get my dad to watch really. He loved it. Diver Dan, this is the captain. What are you mumbling about? I... I think I hear voices, Captain. One of them is singing. Dan, the pressure must be getting you. <laughs> yeah. Dan, they need some time off, even the first ep one episode in. Yeah. See? It's a round lump of hard water, like I said. Uh-oh. Villain music. <laughs> That bright little fish is unprotected, Trigger. Ooh, a Dracula yeah, fish. Boss. Don't call me boss. I'm Baron Barracuda. <laughs> <laughs> Baron Barracuda. Then call me Baron, you fool. 
He's got a monocle. <laughs> Baron, you fool. <laughs> oh, if only, if only, if only Don Knot says Limpet was around, he would yeah. just take care of this whole situation. Ladyfish? Yeah. Maybe I, I am losing my mind. Well, I'm a Limpet. Henry Limpet from Brooklyn. This voice is coming. Flatbush. Time to Prepare to ascend. No, no. <laughs> no. No. Speaking of no, I watched the French dub of Revenge of the Sith with Vader saying no. Uh -huh. It's so much better. Really? Than the, yeah. He hmm. says it with like feeling, like, no. Hmm. Like, okay. Movie's still bad, but, you know. Well, boys, I don't think it's water at all. It's not even ice. It's something that is called glass. Mm. Huh? Yeah, like like my glasses, right on my nose yeah. here. Careful now. What's that? Which called it? The Baron. <laughs> and they didn't have toys for this? I don't know. I, I have That's no idea. Great. It's entirely uh -oh. forgotten. It seems like. Yeah. Well, what were they? What were they going to do with the goldfish? Three friendly fish saw a round glass bowl. A frightened goldfish hides in a coral hole. A lot of cartoons I grew up watching that probably are forgotten. Yeah. How can the um, they found? What was the shark? That, that henchman fish is smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one where it was the same production company that made Anna the Aardvark? It was the, the shark that you gotcha shark. Oh. He wore a top hat and a vest. Yeah, what was yeah. He, what was yeah, called? yeah. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. I remember he was like, yeah, that's how he would scare me, but he wasn't. He, you gotcha. He had a, like a Transylvanian accent. Yeah. What, what was his stop. name? God, that's going to bug me now. Distributed by ITC. It, that's unusual oh. for the, the states. Muppet Show, uh, yeah. Space 1999. Yeah. That's how we would get tricked out when the like yeah. would show that. Uh, that okay. Last time you remember, Boris it's time for Bullwinkle. No good, Nick. Stole the secret rocket so let's stay quiet. The spaceship, took it I aboard will. a submarine and headed off across the ocean. In the meantime, Rocky had convinced the moon men to show him their formula. We can get all these ingredients, I think, except this one. The exception was mooseberry juice, made from the berry of a bush that grew in only one place in the whole country. Near a little place called Frostbite Falls. The boys were delighted to hear this, for Frostbite Falls, Minnesota, was their hometown. Quickly, they started making plans to get the mooseberry juice. But on the submarine, Boris wasn't as cheerful as he could have been. <laughs> Boris, darling, why so sad? I got feeling there is something I forgot. What could it was? I don't know, but something. Cheer up, darling. When we get back, you will get big medals. Medals I got for burning down orphanage, for kicking small dogs, for taking candy from babies. Who needs medals? But still, it's great day. You're right, Natasha. Send radiogram to central control. Ready? Where's, Ready. Well, Natasha... Boot. Got it. I'm booking it. For same money, you get eight more words. Okay. Add this. <laughs> this mustache <laughs> keeps going away. <laughs> yeah, you're Signed right. Boris. Now, what was it I forgot? So Natasha sent a message and an answer came right back. And her nose. Her nose, yeah. Oh, there it is. He's for you. Go back and kill Moose. <laughs> oh, that's what I forgot. <laughs> what can we? It's easy, I'm afraid. We put on breathing apparatus, put sub on automatic pilot, and bail out. And while the two spies <laughs> swam back toward shore, the submarine bearing its precious cargo continued on its way across the ocean. Back in Washington, mm. our heroes were having a rough time getting underway. I'm sorry, sir, but we have no flights to Frostbite Falls. Spat Airlines. Such a place. Oh, yes, we had a train to Frostbite Falls, but they took the tracks up in 1903. We can't help you. <laughs> the only road into Frostbite Falls is just a cow path. What are we going to do? Time is too important. I know. Take we'll a rent cow? a private plane. Come on, Bullwinkle. We're going to the airport. And in a little while, our boys were talking to the owner of a flying service. In a seat, that'll run you just about a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars? Just to get to Frostbite Falls? You could buy the place for eight dollars cash. Gee, Bullwinkle, <laughs> what we need is a good cut rate pilot. Gentlemen, I'll, allow I'll me buy to it. introduce myself. <laughs> Ace Rickenboris at your service. My God. Ace, Ace Rickenboris. Buy air anywhere. Fly now, pray later. <laughs> He's misprinted. Have 
before? Of course you have. He's on every $3 bill the government makes. I've never seen a $3 bill. Boy, it's my fault you're poor. Come on, you want to go or not? How much will it cost to take us to Frostbite Fall? You want round trip? Got me square ones? Round trip costs, uh, how much you got? Well, all together, about 85 cents. Yeah, you lucky kid. Today only special price, 85 cents. Swell! Ready, Bullwinkle? The sooner the quicker. Boy, these... let's go. <laughs> oh, Miss Callahan. These guys were having fun, you can tell. Yeah. The sturdiest, I guess. Okay, all aboard for Frostbite Falls. Please fasten your seat belt. Well, the wily mysterious trap had door right there. For all the yeah, heroes walk, didn't know it, they were only one-way belts, and they were now locked in their seats. <laughs> Don't miss our next one -way belts. episode. One-way belts. Aces wild or the that flying so short. casket. <laughs> Last time. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh... I could watch a uh, marath marathon. Of yeah, that. yeah. Um, I'm glad I put that on the list. Those are so entertaining. Is Carissa still watching? I, I think we've only got the one, the one viewer. Yeah. That's yeah, low low viewer turnout today. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Me. It's this face. Yeah, Carissa says uh, she enjoys these so much too. Yeah, the the Bullwinkle cartoons were so clever. They they were so uh, they they were so cleverly written. You can tell um, that they enjoy the they enjoy the idea that they're yeah. writing about a moose and a flying squirrel. Yeah, yeah. That they just had the fun with it. They loved going into work. Yeah, I I remember reading that they uh, that Jay Ward and Bill Scott, who created the characters, they actually knew a guy in California, an immigrant from some uh, Eastern European nation, a guy named Clarence Bullwinkle. And that's where the <laughs> name comes from. And he and he ran, he 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 ran. Uh, 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 he he sold cars. He had a car lot called uh, Clarence Bullwinkle Automotive or something like that. Which, wow. I, yeah, it was I, this is the craziest thing. Um, so yeah, it was a real guy's name, if you can believe it. <laughs> and his first name was Clarence. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> All right. Um, We've got uh, we've got some stuff to show today. It's all Halloween themed, none of which I've watched through. Um, I, I had the idea last night that I want I wanted to show um, some Robonic Stooges, and mm. uh, I couldn't find any. And I asked uh, Captain Slinky if he had some, and he came through. He sent me several Robonic Stooges oh, wow. episodes. I'll show them some other time, but because uh, I already had. Uh, three things picked out for this, but someday I'll be showing some robotic stooges. Oh, worst damn things ever made. <laughs> um, uh, let's open a folder here. And, uh, and the first thing I'm going to show is Mike's selection for this week. It is uh, the uh, uh, Where's the, where's the link here? The TV room. Okay, so Raggedy Ann and Andy Halloween special. Um, mm -hmm. uh, before we do that, though, let me um, let me tell people again about. Uh, let me post the this link. Is the pumpkin who couldn't smile. The 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 what? Say it again. The pumpkin who couldn't smile. The pumpkin who couldn't smile. Okay. Yep. I just posted the link in the Twitch chat here for uh, where you can download your own copy of. Uh, the great pumpkin charlie brown because it, this year it's not going to be on network tv uh for the first time since 1966 so uh follow that link there and also um uh please make a donation for people watching the video on demand later uh links to uh where you can make a donation are showing up in the twitch chat and also we have this new excuse me this new service called zelle that you connect okay. with your with your existing online bank uh, where you can supposedly donate us, donate to us directly from your bank. Uh, anyway, let's get on with it. It is Raggedy Ann and Andy, the pumpkin who couldn't smile. And you know, this is not going to be anywhere near as good as the Raggedy Ann and Andy movie that you showed yeah. earlier this, this year, which is a magnificent film. Yeah. I think that's Yeah. Yeah. And there's the gloom. Long. How can anybody be that mean? It's the cruelest mean I've ever heard of. 
pumpkin who couldn't smile. Are they angry at the pumpkin who can't smile? Is that what they're angry about? Or are they talking about something else? And Raggedy Arthur. Raggedy Arthur? Yeah. What the? Yeah. He's on a skateboard. Yeah. For, for crap's sake. June 4A? Okay. No, all we need is a big old fat pumpkin. Dawes Butler. I still don't think. I actually recognize the voices already. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Hobart Donovan. They were just having fun. This definitely looks like it's a um Oh, uh, uh why am I forgetting the animator's name? Chuck Jones. Yeah. It looked like Chuck Jones to me. Oh yeah, there it is. Yep. Been a pie or something. <laughs> okay, so he's afraid for his existence. That's why he can't smile. He's already been hollowed out. I'm a failure. Nobody wants me. I'm just a reject. This was first televised October 31st, 1979. 79. Okay. And FYI, if we do this around Christmas time, there is a this is a sequel to the Raggedy Ann and Andy and the Great Santa Claus Caper from the mm. year before that. Okay. So, spoiler alert. I was just carved that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the time that this was shown, it ranked third in the time slot behind NBC's Real People yeah. and ABC's Eight is Enough. Hmm. Yeah. If you rank behind those, you're probably not that good. Yeah. This is the kind of thing that networks would put on because they knew they didn't have anything that would beat the other networks, so they would just put these on as, as time killers. Because yeah, real people uh, and Eight is Enough were hugely popular shows. And they're entirely forgotten now. <laughs> yep. You know, Especially we're, real people. Real people is not remembered at all. No. Mm -mm. At all. No. And you notice we're not watching real people or eight is enough. We're watching <laughs> Raggedy <laughs> and Andy. <laughs> yeah. If only Ricky Ticky Tabby would show up. <laughs> Trick or treat uh -oh. indeed. Off with you. The idea. This is sheer bribery. You must get a treat here. That's June Foray. They credited the voice as Mrs. Hobart something or other. That must have been some sort of in-joke or something. It, it is. It is. Yeah, it was definitely June. The Wikipedia has her as Raggedy Ann, Aunt Agatha, and a neighbor, too. But can I at least have a pumpkin? Ralph, dear, and he knows best. Pumpkins cause fires and they attract fruit flies. <laughs> Do you recognize the actor's name playing the pumpkin? Say it again. Les, Les Tremaine? Yes. I, I do yep, recognize that. He was from tre he Treasure Island, right? Well, also, for me, as the general from the original War of the Worlds from 1950. Okay. The general okay. that comes in kind of in charge. Nope, nope, that's okay. I'll just go okay. ahead and stand back. Okay. Here, here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But also, yeah, that other TV show that we watched. Um, he played the dude that was driving the RV. Why am I forgetting it? Yeah, because you've mentioned him before. Yeah, he was in that. What was that TV show we watched where? Uh, was it Shazam? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so he played. He played mentor. That's right. Yep. Okay. I think this pumpkin is. Uh, I want to tell this pumpkin. You think you're miserable now? Wait till. 
wait till later. Yeah, Ooh. wait till later this week when you start to to rot. And she's right about the fruit flies. Oh yeah. And just what is your big old fat plan to carry a big old fat hairy pumpkin from there to here? Well, that's the easiest part. Well, how do you do that without fleshy parts? Yeah. Okay, this is the skateboard. Ah. Uh. Okay. So now all we got a big old fat way to transport a big old fat pumpkin. Now all we need is a big old fat pumpkin. I still don't think. It just stands to reason that if there's a little boy here. Okay, so. There just has to be a pumpkin out there. Okay, so they they haven't seen the sad pumpkin yet. Boy. Yeah, they're just assuming there's a pumpkin out yeah, there. Yeah, the preview clips were misleading. Yeah. Okay. I can see Mentor doing this voice. Um, the audio is really low, she says. Let me, um, let me turn up the volume here. Hey, we gotta get started. Um, We're running out of Halloween again. I'm gonna have to Push lower. Oh. 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 I'm gonna have to lower Mike's volume. Say Let something, Mike. Go. Let me see if I got the volume good. Let it go. Something. No. Say again. Yep. Going down. Oh, oh, splat! They even had splat show up on the screen. Oh, did they? <laughs> I missed it. Yeah, it's a splat. Is that any better, Carissa? She says that is a lot better. The uh, the volume on the the Raggedy Ann uh, video is really low. I've got it cranked up past a hundred. The pumpkin who couldn't smile. Haven't we seen this already? It's like every time it comes back from commercial break, it has to tell the audience, "Oh, you're yeah. still watching." By the way. Yeah. Okay. Well, the mouse is is leaving. Oh, wait! They already got the pumpkin. Uh-oh. I see trouble coming. Wow. Uh-oh. The music isn't matching the action. No, it sure isn't. Nah. -uh. Gosh. Or. I can't even see what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of dark. Yeah. Oh, sound effects. It's my so inner sorry. child. Yeah. Okay, how did... How, did we miss something here? How did they find the pumpkin and get it on the skateboard? I have no idea. Excuse me, sir. Something you see every day. Yeah. Nice costume. See, at least he didn't go in there and throw away his booze. Yeah, yeah. Carissa is answering my question from before. She said, they just did. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be the action comedy sequence, and, and the show just is just dead. The show just died. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, ghosts. Okay, I see. He's got a unicycle, too? How does everybody have a unicycle? Was it a bicycle that broke apart? Is that Was that the gag? That's I, I missed one? It. Yeah, so there's... But there's not three... What? Is this a jogger? So is this how Steve Prefontaine did his uh, thing? This... 
<laughs> wow, these 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 sight gags are missing the the mark bad. <laughs> Yeah, this just isn't working. Nope. <clears throat> car 44, car 44, Roscoe speaking. Sergeant, sir, you may find this difficult to believe, but I have just witnessed something unique, <laughs> I think, in the annals of crime. I have just observed the following. One jogger, male, exceeding the speed limit by at least 30 miles an hour. Okay, the gag... <laughs> The gag is going on too long. This better have a payoff. Yeah. I'll meet you at the bar. I do like the twitch, though. Yeah. No, sir. There is no record of insanity in my family. <laughs> no, sir. Not until today, that is. You're right, they're avoiding the booze jump jokes. Wasco, I want to apologize for doubting your... Hey, Durham Steve. Hey, Steve, hi. He came in. Thank God somebody else came in. <laughs> I'm, I'm really... this. I'm... I'm, I'm failing. <laughs> this one, this one is bad. The pumpkin couldn't have survived that. No, no, no. Okay, lay down the cat. Yeah. It's almost like Chuck Jones had an idea of what he wanted to do, and somebody yeah. said, "No, you can't do that. You gotta put him on a skateboard." Uh, no comedy that that you know kids can't understand. Yeah. There, there must be a simpler way to, to get a, a, a boy and a pumpkin together. Yeah, and it doesn't take twenty four minutes either. Yeah. <laughs> to get a boy and a pumpkin together, you search that phrase on the internet today, you'll get something else. Oh. This is a wish I was Little boys and pumpkins don't have long-term sure relationships. No. Never no. Come true. But it is. It is true. Okay, just throw them up there. See what happens. Yeah. So they're, they're still... They're still milking the shtick about how to get the pumpkin in the house. I said, it's the skateboard again. The dog with the skateboard. skateboard. <laughs> oh, he goes up the tree. Uh huh. He skateboards up the tree. Okay, if the dog is magic, why doesn't he just just tell him to, to magic the pumpkin into the house? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Raggedy Arthur in God mode. Okay. Damn. You, you mentioned Les Tremaine before, and I said. Uh, I said Treasure Island. That was Johnny Tremaine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, was. Yeah. I, I, I got the names mixed up there. I can. I can't can see why this this show would have maybe had an yeah. effect on. See, I'm. I'm still. I'm still thinking about a conversation we had ten minutes ago. Because <laughs> <laughs> nothing's happening. <laughs> I'm thinking of like I'd rather watch Ricky Tiki Tabby. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you'd rather see a cobra come into this kid's room and Yeah. Come on, Nog or Nagina. Come on. Yeah. Oh pumpkin. You're beautiful. <laughs> I love you. You're the most beautiful, most wonderful pumpkin in the whole world. Crying wide pumpkin world. seeds. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of weird. Yeah. Scratch. Oh, 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 come oh. on. I can't do that. And smash. Smash. <laughs> How, what is it, like Fred Flintstone distance from the window to the bed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get up there. Steve has pointed out that these characters smile like the Grinch. Yeah, because it's Chuck Jones. Yeah. yeah. It's a Chuck Jones animation. 
Yeah, seventies Chuck Jones animation. If everything looked the same. Yeah. Yeah. I've always liked Chuck. Well, um, not my favorite, but I've I've always I've always liked it. Right, there was a series he did in. Right around 1969, 1970, called oh, I've, I've, the, the no. name is leaving the Curiosity we Shop. Mm. It was a live action show it's with animated the segments, and the show's just not available at all. Yeah, um, I, I wish I could find. Uh, right. I wish I could She's find bits of it. There was one piece. There was one bit of animation like from that show that stuck with me all through my childhood. I never forgot it. Um, it was about um, a, a bunch of tools in, in a toolbox. They, they pop out of the toolbox and they're all dancing together, the screwdrivers and the pliers and everything. And they're having like ballets and everything. And then a giant pipe wrench pops up over the edge of the table like Godzilla. And, um, and I never forgot it. I always thought it was Sesame Street, though. It wasn't until... Um, Gosh, maybe 20 years ago that uh, I was able to do some research on it, and it came from Curiosity Shop. Cool. Not from Sesame Street. And I apparently saw the show when I was very young and conflated it with Sesame Street. And I've seen the animation, that animation piece since, and I don't know. I can't find it now. Yeah. Um, I like, I'm sure a lot of people can conflate, um, like, Simon... You know, like the the Simon and the World of Make Believe, is that what it is? Or yeah, with uh, with uh, Sesame Street, but it was actually it was a Captain, Captain Kangaroo. Kangaroo. Yeah. yeah. Didn't yeah, that I, animation come from England? Didn't it come from the I UK? Did, yeah, yeah. And Saturday Night Live kind of played on that with Mike Myers doing yeah. this. Oh, they just they, they just like, lifted the music. Boring. Yeah. Yeah, they like to to troll rings. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I like Chuck Jones, but I'm more of a Tex Avery guy. Yeah. I find Tex yeah. Avery stuff still incredibly funny now. Yeah. And you scared them out of their wits, too. Out of their loving, grown-up wits. They understood us, didn't they? June Foray yeah. was amazing. They yeah. understood my children right now. What is Raggedy still... Ann doing? Uh, hypnotizing her. Yeah. Or gaslighting her. <laughs> yeah. That's some manipulation going on here. Durham Steve says I like Bob McKimson tunes too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We need to, speaking of uh, Robert McKimson, we need to show. Um, Why, am I thinking of the right guy? No, well, Bob, you're right. Robert McKimson did great stuff and he was very underrated. But that made me right. think of, that made me think of Bob Clampett. So we need to show, mm. um, we need to show Beanie and Cecil someday. You know what? Uh, I think it was, did Tex Avery do all those car and house of tomorrow? Yeah. Cartoons? Yeah. yeah. Those are just hilarious. Yeah. And I always liked the screwy squirrel cartoons. But apparently Tex Avery disavowed those in, in, really? in his older age. Yeah, and I, I don't understand why. He says he hated them. I thought they were quintessential uh, classic era cartoons. Um, Master Torgo came in. Yeah, Durham Steve, Tex Avery was one of the creators of uh, Bugs Bunny. He's the one who gave yep. him the, the Brooklyn accent and... Was that the end? We we missed it entirely. Yeah, that's okay. I don't think anything really happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the end. God, that was dismal. Was... The song? Yeah, there's a song. There's such a song with me. Come along. Oh, this is terrible. That's a, that's a song? Yeah. Oh, it's a dirge. Never mind. A dirge. <laughs> yeah. Special thanks to thanks, Bob Ogle. Bob. I recognize the name Bob Ogle. Look that up. See what see the name Bob Ogle. He probably looked at a lot of stuff. Yeah. 
Um, we haven't. Uh, we've been showing. Uh, Ogle did a lot of uh, voice actor, yeah. uh, yeah. animation, and writer. Yeah. I accidentally fast forwarded. Oh, really? Uma Thurman. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The last thing we're going to show here, which includes the commercials, is something I've never seen, and I'm, I'm wondering if Mike's ever seen it. Um, uh, ABC, I know this opening. Yeah, ABC TV on Saturdays, Saturday afternoons, experimented with showing animated versions of books. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah. They're called the, the ABC ABC movie short story specials. God, this animation is like part of my yeah. like internal. Uh, the ABC weekend specials. My head. Yeah. Yeah. Les, if I said vampire, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Where can I hide? Oh, look, my it's neck? Willie Tyler and Lester. The ABC Weekend special yeah. this week is Benicular. Way cooler than uh, Waylon Flowers and Jimmy Madam. <laughs> well, what's a Benicular? It's a rabbit who's supposed to be a vampire. Is Benicula. It oh, One yeah. This is some good stuff, right. man. I've never okay. seen it. Well, let's tell me. Oh, this Where is good. Can I hide my neck? <laughs> Willie Tyler and Lester were really popular on TV at this yep. time. Oh boy, here we go. All stars. There's Howard Morris again. Janet Alan, Waldo. Alan Young. Alan Young, most people may know him as being the voice of Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. The star of Mr. Ed. Which nobody knows about anymore because it stopped rerunning. And he was also in The Time Machine, too. The original. Yeah. Um, uh, George, George Powell. George Powell production. Yeah. George Powell made some good movies, man. Trying to get some sleep. And, and that's Chester doing what Chester's usually doing, reading a book. Mr. Monroe. Oh, reading, man. That's usual for a cat to do? Yeah, yeah my cats read all the time. Pete and Chester and me. But on the day all this started, she was more worried oh, about... Flash, flashback already. With all those accidents they've been having at the plant. So many mysterious things have been happening there. Folks here, even this is the same animation company that did uh, um, Charlotte's Web. Well, right no, say, yeah. Which, if anybody hasn't seen the original Charlotte's Web, it's definitely worth the time. Plant, something was very wrong. We're going to have to work on that freeze-dried vegetable program. Monroe, <laughs> check with research. This is Benicula? Freeze-dried vegetable <laughs> programs? Act <laughs> Because the vegetables and the yeah. Okay. Funny rabbit. The boss was determined that this, the ninth accident, would be the last. He decided to. We're all fired. Oh. Yeah. He decided to cover it up. <laughs> Everyone in this town depends on this plant for their. Income. That's Alan Young. Without Look at his desk. Just that support uh, who, who the hell has a desk like that outside of the Jetsons? There's <laughs> ghosts. The one the press is missing. Oh, he said ghosts? <laughs> yeah. Good, 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 good. This is only 10 years later than the, the Flintstones that we just watched, and look, look how much worse yeah. the animation is. Yeah. For keeps. Without that plant functioning, it's the end of this town. Hey, Mom, Pop, don't go weed down. Wow. Well. Toby and Pete had found a shoebox in some tall weeds, and in it was a rabbit. They found it in a box? Is that the origin of Banicula? Oh, yep, just found it, found it in a box. Chomp. Yeah, chomp. Like Ing English? Yeah. Well, Never said it. Read the note, but I could. There's a lot of Russian wool found in my veins. It said, but the dog know, could read the note. Is this loyal to the book? Is this following the? I don't, I don't think so. Not really that much. Closing, I suppose so. <laughs> We've got ten people watching now. Welcome everybody. Yeah, everybody, hi. everybody, say hello, please. The little rabbit slept all the way to the store where Mrs. Monroe 
selected some vegetables for him. Is the rabbit still asleep? He's not asleep. So just give it some V8, I guess? Hey, oh, he's gone. The rabbit got away. That's kind of weird when you think about it. It's better as a book. I imagine the plot is moving on very quickly here. We looked all over for that little rabbit until I found him atop a bin of tomatoes. At least I thought I did. How he got over there, I'll never know. But good tracker that I am, I went after him. Hey, dog! I tore him to pieces. Not <laughs> That's the trouble with humans. Hi, Carol. Carol came in. Oh, hi, Carol. That's my boss, Jonathan Hot. He's quite a guy. Don't announce it, run. <laughs> okay, everybody's. This is a, a tidal wave. I, don't... I really needed this tonight, too. Look, Harold found Vanicula. Good boy. Are you okay, little bunny? Let's get him home. He looks scared. I just hope the man isn't too angry about what we did to his store. <sighs> no, I'm sure he's fine. Mr. Monroe had to pay for 51 pumpkins. Which 51 pumpkins? Wow, now they're destitute. Yeah. My whole life. Sir, I just came across some of these in the bin. I never saw a white tomato before. Neither have I. It's like all the juice was just drained. <laughs> so, the, so the rabbit is draining tomato juice? Yep. He sucks tomato juice? Some beer, man. Okay. Except <laughs> it wouldn't lose the color. Come on! This looked like a it looked like a I'm garlic. In my room. I found Benicula. He sleeps in my room. You can keep smelly old Harold in your room. If you didn't see it, folks, there's a layer of dirt in that box. Just yeah. remember that. Yeah. That way neither of you will have it in your room. We'll leave Benicula on this table. So they're already Benicula. It sounds like Dracula. <laughs> Tell me again about the note. Tell me again. We found it with the rabbit. It was in Romanian, and it said... Romanian? <sighs> Romania is where Transylvania is, and Transylvania is where Dracula is from. It's all in this book I read. Oh, come on, Chester. <laughs> he couldn't have anything to do with Dracula. Besides, Dracula was a vampire. Uh-huh. There is dirt in the bottom of that box, and I read that Call vampires it. always yeah. line their coffins with dirt from their home country. I read books, I know, I know. Let's go to sleep. Chester. Coming, coming. I like the holes at the top. It's an undead rabbit. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They made a point of showing the rabbit snoring, though. Yeah. So the rabbit has sleep apnea. Okay. I saw him, Harold. He rolled out of the shoebox and snuck into the kitchen. The rabbit snuck into the I know that voice of the cat. Yeah. I don't know the name of the person, but I heard that voice. We, we've, we mentioned him already. He was, he was doing weirdly yeah. gruesome. Okay, that's right. I've already forgotten his name. <laughs> there are too many names. Ernest T. Bass. Yep. No juice left in it. No juice in it. Like someone went into the refrigerator last night and sucked it all out like a vampire. There are no such things as vampires, especially vampire rabbits. Are you sure? Has the dog actually told us what the note said? Has he actually read the note? Yeah, he did with something like, please keep, please keep track of my Bunnicula. Hmm. How did it end up in this kid's yard? It's the return of the Good Jedi question. Yeah. Oh, look. Ooh. Oh, Star Wars board game. Wow. I've never nice. seen this one. Neither have I. This doesn't look familiar at all. Oh. And if the force card is with you, you can overthrow Jabba the Hutt. So long, Jabba. No, you have to have midi chlorians. Come on, everybody. Yeah. Come on. Well, a Sarlacc Pit board game. I've never heard of this. Jedi game from Parker Brothers. You assemble it yourself. How have I never seen that before? I ain't giving up showbiz. I know this. That's fun. Dennis? 
I can't believe this. Like, obvious strawberries. The kid oh. from Mr. Mom? I don't know. The one that had the blanket? The, the whoopee? Okay. Well, I've never seen it, so... Oh, I've seen it, like, more than I've seen Star Wars. <laughs> I have. Mr. Mom is great. New Kellogg's Strawberry Krispies, part of this complete breakfast. Michael Keaton, who plays an unemployed, uh, and he, he unemployed uh, car worker, and he has to stay at home with his kids. Fantastic. Looks like it's his own children. Mm -hmm. In the days that followed, more and more white. Hi, Cherry. Around came in. Hi, Cherry. Cherry. And it wasn't just tomatoes either. It's not a tuba. and white lettuce and cucumbers too. So he's draining the juice out of every vegetable. They started turning up all over the block. Hey, Shenlong is here. Chester got more hey. and more suspicious. Shenlong was at your movie last night. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it was just nice to see you. Absolutely. One of the white tomatoes, and I found teeth marks on the skin. One large tooth, perhaps like a rabbit's buck teeth. Your tail's in my nose. I, I That's accurate about a cat's tail, by the way. It yeah. goes everywhere. Yeah. Don't worry, Harold. I'm okay. And I found the book I wanted. Thrilling. Did he say oh. thrilling? <laughs> yeah. Hell, <laughs> it's dark. Yeah. About vampires. <laughs> Everyone is upset about the plant closing. Some of them think it was haunted by some sort of demon. I still, I'm hearing Screech McDuck, and it's messing me up. Yeah. Now they're upset about white tomatoes. Folks are talking about moving away, like this whole town is haunted. So I, I, I can't get over this idea that the the people who ran the factory were convinced that it was ghosts. <laughs> I just. I don't. I don't buy I mean, that. They're mystery machines. Shouldn't they be showing up? Yeah, I'll. I will buy the premise of a vampire rabbit before I'll buy the idea of the town is convinced that the factory is haunted. Yeah. Well, I like was legal not consulted. And he has long pointed teeth like a vampire has. Well, so do you, and so do I. Thanks for watching, Torgo. Thanks for coming in. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Space Ghost! Because he flies away, yeah. Space Ghost is awesome. <laughs> Tonight, we'll keep an eye on him. We'll stay awake in shifts and see if he leaves that bump. Oh, dare, dare, dare you really? Welcome to my laboratory. Oh! Wow. The 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 rabbit disappeared from that box while that kid was actually holding it, if you remember. So he can obviously turn into mist or whatever. I haven't got enough problems with the plant closing and all the weird vegetables. Now I got a crazy cat on my hands. And now my cat doing impressions. <laughs> Two hours past my bedtime. Even the simple animation of the the, the clock pendulum swinging is crap. Your turn to sleep, mm -hmm. my turn to watch. <laughs> what did I smell? It smells like garlic. It is garlic. It says in that book garlic I read love that garlic, garlic keeps vampires away. You keep that stuff on, and you keep everyone away. Phew, wake me in three hours. While I was dozing, Chester got a bit too engrossed in his reading. Yeah. Chester was the one who was enthusiastic about this. Okay, so, so... So the vampire rabbit has... has sharp canine fangs. In addition to the big buck teeth. That seems really inconvenient. I was so busy sniffing, I didn't notice a wire strung across the yard. Unfortunately, Chester found it. Or rather his tail did. Wait a minute, what? I don't know. Oh uh huh? I told you, Alice. I told you those booby traps I said would catch the poacher in the garden. 
Those booby traps I learned about in Korea. Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, they trying to catch the were rabbit? Like what? Right, uh, Is Wallace and Gromit gonna show up? What? Yeah. <laughs> Dracula. Dracula. So the hey, whole town. Mm. So the whole town is aware of Benicula. Yeah. Like that was Casey Kasem's voice. Hey, wait, was it? Listen, Dracula can turn himself into a bat, right? Maybe he can turn no, himself that guy. Sort of these, these people are making tremendous leaps of logic. Remember that wolf yeah. I said I saw at the plant before they closed it? Well, Dracula can turn himself into a wolf, right? That rabbit at the Monroe's has something to do with it. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's Pitchfork time. Yep. We'll Got to protect the, the, the uh, veg, you know? We'll return after these messages. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Barbie, Barbie commercial. Cash cow Barbie. <laughs> furry stall. Real fur. I watched a uh, uh, documentary on Netflix <laughs> about. Uh, Barbie, it's it's amazing. It's a yeah, it's an interesting history. Donkey Kong Brand cereal has a sweet, crunchy corn taste, and boy, Donkey Kong music the 1950s rock and roll. Yeah, do you do 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 It's Captain Crunch. Come on. Or not, folks. Just eat Mr. T cereal. It's better for you. <laughs> Connect four. Well, the greatest the game, game ever made. Connect four. Gotcha. Four cross. Hmm. One more game. Object. Connect four. I like the giant. In a row okay. while your is this the commercial? Is this the one with the line? Yeah. Can sneak up on you and win the game. I won. Where? I can hear diagonally. Pretty, Pretty sneaky, sneaky, sis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Connect four. The vertical checkers game. The only thing that comes close is the is the original battleship one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back to our story. Now, you know, it's just like now nah, we're back. Pretty uh, sneaky, sis. <laughs> that was one of the uh, that was one of the slogans of my generation. The neighbors all thought little Benicula was the cause of the white vegetables. And the was the was he from Long Island? Everybody's wearing a bathrobe. Yep. Was a <laughs> well, that's not really a big thing anymore, is it? Bathrobes. Why is the the rabbit asleep in, in the dead of night? <laughs> Faking it. See, he's got the yeah. he's got the bewitched thing going yeah. on. Why is the rabbit hasn't played a role in the film at all? Yeah. Hank, what would you do if someone woke you up at one in the morning to tell you there was a vampire rabbit in your house? Well, I guess I think they went bananas. Bingo. Hey, there's the rabbit. The dog and cat have him. Oh, Where do we get our hands wow. Either I'm having a terrible nightmare, or there's an angry mob out there stalking a vampire rabbit. The area around our neighborhood is that, so I never would write that line. Which is where we fled with Bonicula. We figured that mob wouldn't follow us in here. They went this way with the rabbit. Come on. This is a bloodthirsty mob. They're going yeah, anywhere, man. Yeah. Yeah. Look, this is a swamp. This is a, the factory polluted swamp nearby. I I think all the way to Nob. Look listen, at that. the the rabbit is still sleeping. Yep. I think the uh, this dog and cat. I think the the rabbit, the vampire rabbit, probably doesn't need your help. No. Vampire, but Benicula's got a uh, rug on the top there. Yeah, he does. Is it just me, or does this make no sense? <laughs> Not making sense. But kids, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Benicula is supposed to be the hero that the kids are rooting for, but the rabbit has never been awake the whole the whole movie. It hasn't, it hasn't woken up for a moment and yeah. to say, 
Where the hell am I? It hasn't said or done anything. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait what? Looks like a job or oh. footprints are wet and recent. I didn't tell Chester, but I had a hunch who had made those footprints we found. Oh really? Okay. Edge of oh, is clear. Yeah. No sign of them. Them? Who's them? Giant ants? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the rabbit is awake, but he still hasn't said anything. And if I nope. smell what I think I smell, I know what caused all the accidents that closed this plant. Okay. What? Go ahead. Them. What? Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Wolves. Let's get out of here. It's just wolves? Uh huh? So wolves were sabotaging the factory and nobody knew. What about the vegetables? Oh, and the electricity is on. Yeah, on, off. Yeah. You don't know wolves then, pal. Yeah. That's why cats are indoor animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're domestic, they're domestic, they're domesticated. They're a snack. Yeah. Uh -oh. I spoke too soon. What monkeys? Is this is yeah. No time to get I heard a I heard a monkey. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. Maybe they'll find the Ark Ark of the Covenant. Okay, uh hero of the picture wake up and do something you know <laughs> deus ex bonicula come on wake <laughs> up <laughs> so when they abandoned the factory everybody just left their stuff in there yeah One tiny hobbit against all the evil the world can muster. <laughs> Just yeah. do it. Do they, it. They open the door and all the all the wolves are dead with their throats torn open. <laughs> there was a TV series about the panicula. There was? Yeah. Oh, so the rabbit is literally magic. Yep. Okay, so I don't, I don't get... I'm, I'm really missing something here. <laughs> There's so much about this that I don't understand. During the full moon, Vanicula wakes up and suddenly lets, lets loose his yeah. demonic powers. And the idea that, that, that all the sabotage is being caused by wolves, and these are just wolves, they're not like werewolves. That's very specific sabotage. Yeah. The book has to make more sense. Because yeah. this makes none. It was the books were written by a married couple. Yeah. Um, there were several of them. And I think the first one made it to the print after the wife died. Mm. I think I remember reading it. Um, so it's kind of bittersweet. They took the wolves to a they took the wolves to a zoo, yeah. I think they want to study wolves that... The wolves will be well fed at the zoo. That were smart enough to... ...sneaking into the plant at night in search of food. Then the wolves chewed through the rope and caused the other accident. Wow, Oh, that's a leap of logic, They were looking for vegetables. It's a vegetable factory. Monday morning. Our town is... I call BS. Yeah. explains the white tomato. Bonicula shit. <laughs> I think I know what does. This bag has been sitting here for almost two weeks. It's a head of lettuce. Ugh. But it's all moldy and wilted. Mm. Those are the vegetables yeah, eat it. we bought the night we found Bonicula. That's right. And since that night, has either of you bothered to feed Bonicula? I thought you were going to feed him. Why should I? Okay, oh. so it's been sitting on the table for two weeks. You were both for Ugh. 
If you're going to have pets, you have to take care of them. The poor bunny was yeah. probably so hungry, he left his box in search of vegetable juices for nourishment. Oh, yeah, that, that solves juice. all the mysteries. <laughs> well, that explains the white tomatoes. They'll feed him regularly, so he won't They're have talking to, to their dog. Yeah. He looks so cute there. Imagine the damn thing still isn't awake. This was a vampire. You and the neighbors all I wish I could sleep that much. Vampire yeah. rabbits. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> it seems like the cat would identify her. Yeah. Ridiculous. Put the top back on. Huh? Yeah, you're right, Steve. They, they've got a hell of a library in the house. Yeah. <laughs> I like to have a really nice library. Okay, that was lame. That, that really sucked. Yeah. And yeah, the books are books are better. Okay. Strawberry shortcake. Strawberry shortcake. Strawberry shortcake. Very happy home with Look at the size of that oh, plastic dollhouse. Yeah, I know. Wow. Did strawberry shortcake promote like like fruit consumption by kids? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> like program like the kids to eating more fruit. I have no idea. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't interested in strawberry shortcake. Come on. <laughs> what year was this? What year was this benicula show? 1982. 83. Hey, is is that the girl from? That the pol poltergeist girl? Um, I don't think so. No? No, it's not her. She looks familiar, though. Yeah. But in 83, in 83, I was 18. So, no, I was not following Strawberry Shortcake. I remember this. No, there was uh, all those commercials back in the 80s. Yeah. Um, there was a commercial for Pitfall mm -hmm. that had Jack Black as a kid. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. never be. I'm never amazed by seeing some commercial with somebody who was yeah. really famous now. Yeah. Um, I think Elizabeth Moss used to do commercials for like Excedrin or Tylenol or something mm -hmm. like that. Here are the hosts of the ABC weekend special. Hosts. Yeah, that's right. Forgot they were in the beginning. Yeah. That's the Nikita, this the is like this is the entertainment part. The Nikita by Deborah right. and James Howe. Do you like vegetables, Les? Sure, I'm stopped. Have some. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, I guess I'm not hungry. What? He had little teeth. Yeah. <laughs> the next weekend special, Quentin rescues a Ooh. leprechaun. Thanks for saving me life, lad. Who grants his biggest wish. I wish for all the money in the world. And that's just what Quentin gets. Yeah. Until he loses his best friends. Come on, Quentin. You're making fun of us. Is this what you do when you have all the money in the world? I don't know what's going on. You wished for money, Quentin. Not friends. All the money in the world, based on the novel by Bill Britton. All the money in the world. Yeah, phrasing it that way, yeah, by, by definition, mm. the... Okay, oh, Ruby Spears. See the world's longest hot dog We're... on Ripley's Believe It or Not. <laughs> Monday. Believe it or not. not. In the Circus World Championship. And watch the world's strongest man. So, yeah, that, that leprechaun was incredible. Dick Beals. Tuesday, watch the woman who will the okay. miracle on the ABC After School Special. Yeah, but we're, what I was going to say was wording your wish that way, by definition, he would take everybody else's money and give it to you. Right. I always wondered yeah. about that. If you wanted money from, yeah. say, a genie, it yeah. would have to come from somewhere, yeah. so someone would be extremely poor. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Now, see, these these images here make the cartoon look interesting, <laughs> but it yeah, wasn't. Like it, was, it was not. Yeah. It was not at all. <laughs> It was a trick. Okay, so, right. so that was a Ruby Spears production. They were they were terrible. Yes, yes, they were. They were they were truly terrible. Oh, Let's we see. like ABC. ABC was good yeah. back in that back in the day. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ruby Spears were a couple of guys who uh, who started out at Hanna Barbera, and they they wanted to uh, they wanted to branch out, they do things different, do things better, and they came up with stuff like this. And Fang Face. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. um, you were saying that uh, were Ruby Spears the ones who animated the Charlotte's Web film? I, I, I believe thought... so. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I could double check that. 
yeah uh okay everybody thanks for watching that was really <laughs> that was really lousy that's right at, <laughs> it's right at noon we're we're right at straight up noon yeah that was lousy as usual because it's bad saturday morning um we had some fun watching our our uh our regular weekly stories and our new uh diver dan which actually yeah um uh, I'm, which... I'm looking forward to that yeah i'm looking forward to for to more more of that yeah yeah okay well good um because uh yeah we'll be watching more diver dan next week and we'll get to meet the mermaid you'll like the mermaid Ooh. yeah oh yeah i've never not liked the mermaid <laughs> um so yeah that was it for uh bad saturday morning thank you everyone for watching we've got seven people watching now please make donations uh, we try to reach a uh, hundred dollars in donations every week we're at zero uh, so far this week later tonight um 6 p.m pacific i'll be back on with uh bride of frankenstein and uh the wolfman and i'll have a couple of co-hosts for that and uh, good stuff it'll, it'll be yeah it'll be great fun um so uh i guess that's it thanks again mike uh, you're welcome thank you for having me sure bye everybody bye <laughs>